what are the advantages of slouching? What makes a person slouch? There must be some reasons why he puts his life in danger. Because, as we know, slouching doesn't bring any benefits to your health. Maybe there is some benefit in something else. There are other advantages and some good things that a person gets by starting to slouch, risking their health. Let's look into this question in more detail. So, what happens when a person starts to slouch? Let's divide this board into two parts. On one side, we'll write the disadvantages of slouching, pay attention, and on the other side, will write the advantages of slouching, so. By the way, in this video, at the request of one of my viewers, I will try to copy one of David Leaf's seminars as accurately as possible. As accurately as possible. The downside of slouching. The first one. Restriction of chest mobility. Restriction of rib mobility. The lungs can't function fully. A person can't take a full breath in or out. And attention, their vital lung capacity decreases. It's not called vital lung capacity for nothing. They could have just called it lung capacity if it didn't affect the length of our lives. But that's why it's called vital lung capacity. And the first thing is the restriction of lung mobility and the decrease in vital lung capacity. And consequently, as you've already guessed, a decrease and reduction in lifespan and a deterioration in quality of life. Quality of life. What does that mean? It means you live less and get sick more compared to someone who doesn't slouch. So, the first thing is the, the limitation of lung capacity and the mobility of the chest. The second one. Actually, let's discuss the disadvantages along with the advantages. What does slouching give a person? What do they exchange their lung capacity for? What do they get in return for it? That is, they breathe less deeply. Their breathing is shallow, not as deep. There is less oxygen in their blood and accordingly, less oxygen goes to their head as well. The brain doesn't work as well when the oxygen level drops. Accordingly, it's hard to think. You feel a bit dizzy all the time. And if the oxygen level drops even more and the vertebral artery gets compressed even further, you start to feel kind of half drunk. And in this way, people who like to drink, for example, or those who smoke also experience a slight feeling of dizziness after smoking a cigarette or oh, for people who drink alcohol they they also get that uh, half drunk feeling after drinking you can get the same kind of feeling when your blood oxygen level drops and when the vertebral artery is compressed so you see there's no need to spend money on alcoholic drinks or tobacco products. It's very simple. You achieve exactly the same slightly altered state of consciousness as if you're in both our world and the other world at the same time just by using this method. So maybe the second advantage is a kind of euphoria and a semi-fainting state. The second disadvantage of slouching is
I wrote them all down. So the second disadvantage of slouching is restricted blood supply to the brain. What do we get? Not only does the oxygen level in the blood decrease because our lungs aren't moving fully, but the vertebral artery itself also gets compressed and less and less blood reaches the brain and the outflow gets worse and worse. Chronic impairment of cerebral circulation, areas in the cerebral cortex that gradually die off. Memory loss and everything that comes with it. The downside is reduced blood supply, brain. What's the upside? Well, we've covered one. What other upside could there be? What is a person risking reduced blood supply to the brain for? I don't know what the upside is. Uh, there isn't one. The third one. As we all already know, with slouching, the pectoralis minor muscle definitely shortens. Under the pectoralis minor muscle are the lymphatic ducts and beneath it is the neurovascular bundle that goes to the arm. When the pectoralis minor muscle shortens due to impaired lymph circulation, swelling appears on the face, legs and arms because lymphatic fluid stagnates. And what does this lead to? Besides visual disfigurement, ET, First of all, this causes immune system disorders because the main function of the lymphatic system is to provide immunity. And secondly, it's a disruption of nutrition because the lymphatic system is where the nutrients are actually located. And due to the shortening of the pectoralis minor muscle, because of its shortening, there is always compression of the neurovascular bundle that goes into the arm. The arm starts to weaken, the arm starts to hurt, and numbness in the fingers appears. You can't pick up a kettle and pour yourself some hot tea, or sit in front of the television in the evening watching your favorite show. The pain distracts you, and you have to ask someone to pour you tea, or do it with both hands, which isn't very convenient. You burn yourself, spill it, and get irritated. There are no advantages, as it may seem at first. There are no advantages, but an army of slouching television viewers will argue with me. There is an advantage to slouching that outweighs all these dangers. By slouching, you can gain people's trust by using a certain special posture that already predisposes them to a certain attitude toward you. By using a certain position of your hands and back, the tilt of your head, you can use your slouched back as a kind of weapon in communication with others, evoking pity and sympathy. So the third thing is what we've just been talking about. The fourth. Ah, the fourth downside, which experienced slouched people know firsthand, is the prolapse of internal organs, the mobility of the, the rib cage is limited and the intra-abdominal and intra-thoracic pressure is altered. This alters the tone of both the abdominal and pelvic floor muscles 
and accordingly everything gradually little by little slides down toward the ground under the influence of gravity. There's nothing to hold back the internal organs so they gradually sink and slide downward because you don't use 90% of your muscles you subject them to this kind of gradual change in position. So, the fourth thing is the prolapse of internal organs, but the ever-optimistic slouch supporters of slouching object to me, saying there are some advantages to this. They say there are even benefits to the prolapse of internal organs. You might wonder what possible benefits could there be when your intestines are no longer in their proper position but instead drop into the pelvis and compress your operator and adductor nerves. You would seem there are none. It would seem there are none. And in fact, there really are no benefits. None at all. So let's sum up the results of our battle kicks. We have two votes in favor of slouching and uh, four votes against slouching. Thus, as it turns out, in this independent showdown between slouched and non-slouched people, the non-slouched people win. These are not just non-slouched people. These are people with straight, proud posture. They are the ones who win over the slouched people. Why are all slouched people so sad? Well, the brain doesn't get enough blood supply. Its function is disrupted. The regulation of all other organs and systems is affected and mood decreases. Our mood is determined by our hormonal background. And how can it be good? in a good state when the most important organ that regulates everything our brain is constantly starving it constantly lacks oxygen because its level in the blood is low and because blood doesn't flow well to the head and so defeated slouching people captured by people with proud, graceful posture, walking confidently. They become part of their group and under the influence of their charm, under the influence of their positive, healthy energy, their spine, sometimes with a crack, sometimes without, if there are no functional blocks, begins to straighten and a smile appears on their face a person finally takes a deep breath for the first time in their life with their full chest, their ribs crack, their vertebrae crack. They finally breathe not just with the top of their lungs, they breathe with their whole lung. Finally, it expanded. The lung finally understood this is what I was made for. I was made to inhale oxygen and exhale carbon dioxide. We exhale carbon dioxide, we help plants and plants feed on carbon dioxide. Another downside is that slouching makes a person naturally greedy. That is, he has a dominant desire to take everything because the muscles that work better for him are the flexor muscles which pull everything toward themselves, draw things in. He only takes, never gives. A person whose extensor muscles work well can both take and give equally well. There is a constant exchange happening in him, an exchange of energy that comes into him and radiantly sparkling flows out of him. And in this way, more and more cheerful, healthy people holding hands, run toward the sunset, smiling and having fun. This time, I tried to reproduce as accurately as possible one of David Leaf's seminars, which one of my favorite viewers,
kindly asked me to do. Stay healthy. That's how every... David always ends his seminars as a tradition. Not every David ends seminars, but David ends every seminar.